We didn't stop. We didn't, there was nothing to it. I mean, I didn't do nothing. Nothing. That's why I want to have nothing. It's like just another I'll day. I'll your shirt. And we didn't do nothing. You know. <laughs> I wasn't, you know. I was serious about you. Know, like you said, hey, you yeah, got you yeah, whatever you got going. Yeah, huh? Who would like to open us up in prayer tonight? I can do it. Jim's going to do it. Dear Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all the things we've done that we know about and all the things we've done that we don't know about, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us that we know about and also all the blessings we don't know about. We ask you to be with us tonight and send your Holy Spirit down and soften our hearts and open our minds up to the message that's being brought up out of your word, Lord. We ask you to be with everybody in our Hall of Grace prayer list and all the things, all the un unsaid prayers that they need, Lord. We ask you in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, something funny about tonight. Um, I, uh, I prepped for tonight, wrote down questions I wanted to ask at each interval uh, in, the, in the scripture, uh, put it in my planner, Reminded myself to bring my planner and <laughs> it's in one. So we're going to wing it. Yeah. Oh, but no. it's funny because last week we winged it, but I think it was one of the, the best ones we've had lately. So I don't know. You never know. So um, we're going to be in chapter five tonight. And chapter five is a pretty interesting chapter because it's one of the more controversial chapters in this. Uh, book and, and I'll explain why when we get to that part. It's in the second part of the chapter, and uh, and I'm going to tell you why it's controversial. I'm going to tell you why people manipulate those verses for their own purposes. Okay, but before we get there, somebody just start out and read verses one and two. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. You know, if we only had those two verses of scripture at, at all, we would be okay. Imitate God. Be imitators of God. What does that mean? Do as he does. Yeah, absolutely. Ephesians chapter 5. Do as he does. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus specifically, right? Because we can't create things the way God did, but we can follow Christ's example, right? Imitate God, therefore, in everything we do. So if we do it in everything we do, we should be leaving a lot out that we currently do, right? I mean, if we're honest with ourselves. Amen. Right? Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. There it is. What does it mean to live a life filled with love? What does that mean? I mean, it's not even respecting people as a form of love. It's not different forms of love. Yeah. I mean, it's, we it's kind of know what we're talking about here. And all those different kinds of love, right? I think it's happy. Be happy. You got anything that brings I happy. think happy. Well, Bobby's, Bobby's, Bobby's got to tell us something here. All right, so we got what? The agape love. Agape. We got um, Eros. The who? Eros. Yeah, yeah. We got Phileo. Keep going, keep going. There's three, three more. Phileo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to pronounce any one but that. So the idea behind this is, is there are different types of love. He's absolutely right. Yeah. You know, there are different types of love. Phileo is brotherly love. Eros is, is romantic love. Uh, agape is uh, the all-giving, all-sacrificing love. I don't remember this one. But the idea behind it, though, is the agape form of love. Be filled with agape love. Love for everybody. And listen, is it easy to be that way? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. Are, is everybody lovable? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, be like Christ. Christ loved everybody enough to where he gave his life for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So, this is how... You show that my, you are my disciples for the love you have for one another, right? This is, I mean, our, uh, a brother will lay down his life for another brother is what it says, right? So, so we have to look at it and say, 
How does that compare to Christ? Well, he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice to us, a pleasing aroma to God. So live the life, live a life of love to where it's so sacrificing that you're willing to give your, yourself for others. That's hard to do. It's hard to do, especially for people we don't like. Yeah. Right? The Bible says um, that, I'm, I'm going to mess up the exact terminology, but it says it's hard enough to give yourself uh, give your life for somebody that uh, you love, mm-hmm. as opposed instead of somebody you don't love, right? But that's what that's what Christ did. Said love everybody, right? And then he jumps right into something that that smacks us upside the head if we're paying attention. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Has anybody today had sexual immorality, impurity, or greed within them? Anybody? Let's be honest. Oh, I'm carrying them. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm impossible, sexual. right? I mean, wow. the reality is this is a part of our everyday life. If we're not living in the spirit, if we're impurity. not conscious. What's impurity? Uh, it, it could be multiple things. Living in a pure life, life speaking impurely. Um, thinking impurely. That's, um, that's, that's the one to think. If it's, you don't have to actually go out yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not just about sexual immorality. It's not just about sexual thoughts. Impurity yeah. has to do with tainted things. You know, where something's pure, you know, water is pure, and then you put oil in it, and it's tainted. It's impure. Yeah. So, so we have to recognize that he's talking about the stuff we deal with on a daily basis. Being a part of this world makes us impure. Okay. Greed. Such sins have no place among God's people. Notice he calls them sin. Obscene stories. Foolish talk. Coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let them be thankful. This to God. Guys, we're surrounded by this stuff. I, I had to counsel somebody today about um, sexual harassment. You know? And it's specifically obscene stories. Foolish talk. Coarse jokes. Uh, we like to talk about, we like to joke about sexual things. You know, we think it's funny. It's not funny. It's not for us. It's what it says. You know what I've decided to do when people start doing that, especially as the HR guy, when people say it? Turn it say, on and say it's telling a bad joke. Absolutely. Usually I'll say something like, hey, football season's coming up, right? Who are you rooting for? <laughs> you know, and the idea is to call it out so strongly that they recognize there's no place. Of course, they do it in a joking way. And it changes the subject. Hey, how about the bears? <laughs> the bears. Yeah, see? The bears. And it, and it, but it, it, he specifically says, that's not for us. That's not for us. We shouldn't be laughing at that stuff. We shouldn't be participating in that stuff. Okay? You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. That should terrify us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That should get your attention. Somebody, I saw somebody on uh, online who said, uh, you know, only God can judge me. And then right below it, somebody else said, that should scare you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and if, we're, if we're being honest, that should scare us. Okay? For a greedy person is an idolater. How is a greedy person an idolater? Because it's like you're greed for money, you're idolizing whatever you're greedy for. But it didn't say money specifically. No, but anything. How do you yeah, idolize something? Greedy means you can't get enough ah, of something. Yeah. There we go. You're, you're not filled. Yeah. So if something's filling you <laughs> by something you're worshiping to fill you, that's an idol. Okay? The feeling is tied to whatever it is that you're worshiping. Whatever we're putting before God. Yeah. Is an idol. You know, something I taught a long time ago, you know, one of the Ten Commandments, you should have no God before me. It's not just in front of me, it's before me. You should have no gods in front of me. Yep. You should put no gods in my presence. Right? Mm-hmm. No other gods. And and that's what it's talking about. Idolatry. That could be anything. That could be your children. That could be your family. That can yep. be, mm-hmm. you know, if we recognize, if we're honest with ourselves. Anything you obsess over. Anything that we put in place of or ahead of God. Like a motorcycle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 let's there. not get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, or like it. when you have a garage fill and you got to have that one over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's anything. It's anything. Yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. Anything. It could be 
something you want to do. It doesn't have to be a possession or something. You put anything you want to yep. do. Somebody read verse 6. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on them uh, who disobey him. So, do people try to excuse their sins? Yeah. <laughs> Justify them. How? Give me some examples. God's so only in heart. It's only a misdemeanor. Okay. Well, only a misdemeanor. What else? I can always ask for forgiveness. It's not as bad as he does. What? I can always ask for forgiveness. I can ask for I didn't kill anybody. I didn't kill anybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was born this way. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my goodness! I've always done this. I've always done this. What's the problem? It's fun. Never hurt me before. Right. It doesn't hurt. I'm not hurting anybody. I mean, really, that's what it's talking about. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey. Look, you can justify it all you want. It's funny because I've had people try to justify their sin to me, and I say to them, "Why are you telling me? I don't care. Your sin is your sin." You don't have to explain it to me, bro. You've got to explain it to God. Right. If you're trying to convince somebody, you're talking to the wrong person. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I told that. I said, why are you working so hard to convince me that you're right? Guilt. That's exactly right. And they realize that. Mm -hmm. Right? Guilt, knowing that there's something bigger. Because if they can convince me, somehow it makes it okay. Right? Mm. Because if you... If you, you either worship God or you put yourself in place of God, one of the two, somebody's going to be God. Somebody's going to decide who's wrong or right. Yeah. Okay? Don't be fooled by those people. Don't participate in the things that people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have a light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produced only was good and right and true. Mm -hmm. Can you have light at the same time you have darkness? No. Huh? Nope, wouldn't be dark anymore. Ah, there you go. So, even if <laughs> you're one believer in a room full of a million unbelievers, there's still light there. Okay? And even if your heart is struggling with darkness, there's still light there. Yep. We have to always remember that how bright we allow that light to be is up to us. It's up to us. We either cover the light and shield it. It's still there. When we shield it, we put it under a basket, whatever, or we open it up. That's up to us. You know? People say, oh, man, I love when you do this. No, that ain't me. That's the light of God. Amen. Yeah, I, I can't amen. do this. Yep. You can't have light in the darkness. That's scripture. You know? It can't coexist. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. How do we know what pleases the Lord? <laughs> How do we know? Well, Come we on. have to read His Word. For There's one a book thing. that tells us. Instruction <laughs> <laughs> manual. You've heard yep. that. You've heard me joke about that from the pulpit, right? I right. Say, I say it's too bad we don't have a book of how to live our lives in a godly way. <laughs> it's so bad. I wish we did. Right? <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. And it's true. You when you accept the Lord, too. I know. I'm getting slapped around all That's time. right. Come on in. Come on in. Hi. Come on. Welcome. Sorry, Father. No, come on in. You come on in. Come on in. Hey, Denny. Oh. He goes my brother, Dave. Okay. And we wanted to see if maybe he could help us try to find out how we could sell his bike out here because he just passed away last week. Dennis, who? I don't know. Over on Southern Sixth Street. Okay. Here, um, Dennis, 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 what's Dennis' last name? Border. Yeah, yeah Ford, that's Dennis it. Ford, Neil. Oh. George's husband. Yes. Oh, that yes. Dennis. Oh. Oh. My husband. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, but we don't know anybody here because we're basically from yeah. New York. But well, we can text we're them. We're trying to reach out to here. Them. You know what kind of bike it is? Yeah, it's hard. I didn't want to stop recording. Yeah, it's an old tool. <laughs> no. oh. um, I ain't gonna stop recording. Oh. Uh, this is local, is it around here? Yeah, it's right up here. Right up the street. Yeah. Go to classic. Oh my god. I don't know that much about it. I'm being greedy, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he's telling me to go buy the bike, man. 
That's the Holy Spirit leading you to that place. That's right. Yeah. You know, the, the specifics, you got the title for yep, you. Yeah, everything yeah. free. Yeah, everything free. Do you have a price in mind? Like I said, this was all on the spectrum. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you want to call him? Hey, it's all being recorded. That's right. The whole world sees it. It's awesome. Aww. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Yep. Yes. Here we go. That pleases God. You know, it's not just about everybody. Everybody thinks you know worship is just music or or mm -hmm. reading your Bible. Anything that we do, just like that. Yes. Yes. That is in the name. They're coming for help. God. Please. Yep. Amen. 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 Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It's, he's not talking about calling people out. Don't misunderstand what he's saying. He's not saying, oh, you sinner. He's saying, recognize, <laughs> shine a light on it, know where it is. Yeah. Expose it, know where it is. So, like, you know, like you said, the instructions are there. Yeah. Okay, this is what you don't do. That's right. And this is what you do do. Exactly. <laughs> you don't go to bars, right? You don't go to bars anymore, right? Nah. Why not? Same reason uh, I don't. <laughs> don't drink anymore. Amen, right? Because you know what can happen there, and yeah. it's exposed. That's the point. Right. We know where the dangers are. Lord. Exposed it. A Lord, that's yeah. right. All right? When Christ did point out the Pharisees, he called them uh, open sepulchers. Yeah. And yep. sons of Satan. Yeah, he could. Snakes? Yeah. Snakes. He called them Snakes. Snakes. things. Hippers. Vipers. Hippers. Yeah. You know? It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed and the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why as it is said, Awake, O sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. Have you guys heard that song, Sleeper? Yes. <laughs> I love There's it. a song called Sleeper. It is so good. And, and, it's, and it, it's about that verse. No kidding. It, rise it's, it's Wake Up Sleeper. Rise, yeah. That's the name of the song. And, and, and the idea is that we have to be cognizant. We have to be aware. We have to be um, on to what's going on around us. You know, right. if, you, if you look at... Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is lurking is around lurking. seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in 2 Peter 5.8. I mean, we are his beef jerky. Mm. You know, so we have to recognize that we have to be vigilant. We've got to be on, on guard. If we're not, all of a sudden, we're going to trip over something because it's not visible. Because we haven't shined a light on it. Mm. All right. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. What does it mean to be wise? You get the wisdom of God. 
Okay, what else? Not just, not just, because we can, we can spiritualize this all day long, right? But, but talk about, let's talk about wisdom. How do we make wise decisions? Right from wrong. No difference. That's it, right or wrong. Okay, right or wrong. What else? Making mistakes. Making mistakes, absolutely. What do you do when you make a mistake? You learn from it. Hopefully. All right. Wrong. I think it's recognize the yin and yang, hot and cold, good and bad, yeah. up and down. Recognize is that going to be the same for everybody? <laughs> well, yeah, up is always yeah. up and down is always down. God is always good, the devil is always bad. God <laughs> is always hot and cold. Yeah, basically, the yin and yang makes it just the same. Okay, but listen. Is what's right or wrong going to be the same for everybody? They believe that. Yeah. If him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. No. The answer is no. I might be able to have a drink with no problem. Drifter can't. Right. Me neither. I might be able to... Um, I might be able to... I don't know. Be in a, a group of women and not look at them lustfully. Somebody else may not. The reality is, right is right and wrong is wrong, and I agree. But everybody's tempted by different things. Oh, yeah, but the idea is acting on it. But, you know, I, I've said that for you know, forever. Well, I, you know, well, I have to read a smoke, even though you don't want to. If you, real, if you think it's a sin, and you honestly believe in your heart of hearts it's a sin, right. Then picking up this cup, if I think that's a sin, that's a sin for me to that's pick right. up that cup. And not only that, the person that's with you, according to Paul, shouldn't pick it up either. That's what Paul said. That's exactly what he said. He's like, if you, if somebody doesn't eat meat. That's what he's talking about. Don't force somebody that doesn't think it's a sin. That's exactly right. But he's saying, don't you ever take it either. Yeah. And so... Huh? In front of them. In front of them. That's so right. That's so if somebody's saying that, then then he's going back to the law. You're mm -hmm. following the law. Right. You know, no, he's he's talking specifically about how it's going to hurt them. It's going to make them. It's going to be a stumbling block. So if somebody's like smoking, and I, I yeah. to me, exactly. That's yeah, exactly right. he was yeah. saying smoking. To stumble. Smoking to me is. That is not fair. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> no. no smoking. It's not a sin to smoke. No. It's not a sin to drink. No. You know, it's it's not a sin, period. So if somebody drinks in front of an alcoholic, they're not sinning. And they're not sinning for an alcoholic because you don't know when you might be grabbing a drink and the guy next to you that you don't know is an alcoholic. If yeah. you know and you do it, then it's a sin. But it's the same as smoke. Yep. I mean, yeah. People think it's a sin to smoke. You know, yep. but then I agree. Walk, it is for me. Every time I walk outside when I first got saved, in every church there, you gotta quit smoking, you gotta quit smoking, you gotta quit smoking, you gotta quit smoking, that's the temple of the Holy Spirit, you gotta quit smoking. So I finally got tired of this, I gotta quit killing people first, then I'll quit smoking. You know what I mean? Yep, that's what he said. You know what's funny though? Listen, hold on a second, you know what's funny though? The same person that says that will go eat a double cheeseburger with extra bacon. Not me. And that's what they eat anything about that. Yep, they're doing keto, it's okay, just can't have the fun. Exactly. It's always blunt. Yeah, right. But my point is, it's the same thing. You turn around, the same person will start gossiping about somebody. Oh, yeah. that's bad. Go ahead. It's like uh, giving somebody give you too much change to catch them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And you think, oh boy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I made some money today. Woo. <laughs> you think it was. Uh, God sees it. You gave yeah. a five and they give you a change for a ten. Man. Yeah. You know, you know that that's not right. You know. And if you can live with that. Good and luck. You, you gotta, you it's not God. The change you aren't saved if you can't. Because, boy, if something like that happens, the Holy Spirit lays it on you right then yeah. and there. No, God, not, every time yeah. I got a foul mouth, and any this still telling what could come out of this Bible. And <laughs> as soon as it's going like this, it's right about <laughs> your ears, yeah. and I'm over to get smacked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't always yeah. acknowledge it, but I know it. Yeah. You know? Or you know it, yeah. Gotta do anything to get away with it. Mm -hmm. But it's, listen, that might be Jim and he's being transparent about it, but we all have something. Like it. Yeah, oh, everything. I don't care what it is, we all right. have something. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're right, but um, through the sanctification process, there's less of that in me. That, yes. Uh, I'm yeah, not perfect, absolutely. but there's That's the things I used to practice in excess, now yes. I can practice in moderation. Amen. And, I, and, and there's things I'm still working on, right? But it's part of the sanctification but process. It, and I agree with you. My point is, we may judge a Jim about his, right. his language. No. 
but we are in no position to do that <laughs> right, because no. we have it's something like else too. that's similar. Something. Yeah. Yeah. That's my yep. point. It may not be that, right, but right, it's right. something similar. We're all sinners. Yeah. Right. So, so, uh, one's so not any better right. than the other. That's right. Listen to this. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine. There he is. You're not allowed. You can drink, but don't be drunk. Right. You yep. can drunk. Now you've crossed the line. Okay? Because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. How is being filled with the Holy Spirit compared to being drunk with wine? Tell me how you compare those two things. They both make you feel good. Yeah. But, that's a good but, point. But, but being drunk is temporary. Filled with the Holy Spirit is yeah. eternal. Yep. That's fantastic. What else? Yep. Mm. Something I'm going to get at that's going to make this kind of come alive a little bit more. They change the way you act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care if it's being drunk with wine or being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's going to change Mind the way altering. you act. Okay? Yep. Mm. And so that's why he compares the two things. Your mind and moods. Yeah. Altering. Absolutely. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be thoughtful about what you say. You're going to consider other people's feelings. If you're drunk, you can care less about other people's feelings. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink that much. A touch of alcohol over 30 years. Me and there. It's got nothing to do. It's, it's just, I did not like what I was doing. I don't like crosses. I look back at the way I was and everything else, and I, period. I mean, because I know. I mean, when I accept the Lord, I argue with everybody in the world. I said, no, you know, he doesn't care if you drink, he doesn't care if you uh, if you smoke, he doesn't. But don't be a drunkard, don't yeah. go too far. And I couldn't be 100% sure if I took the first short draft glass of beer that the next step was higher. <laughs> That's right. Go there. I've got when it's too many, a thousand of them run up. <laughs> you know, I have no problem relating with somebody that feels they don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I want to, I want to share something that, that you may, may make you look at this different. When you look at alcohol, it's no different than the Holy Spirit. When you take a drink or two or three, you're allowing your behavior to be manipulated by a substance. Now listen to me. You're putting yourself under the authority of a substance. Do you realize that? Yeah. When, when it is now controlling your behavior, you are now submitting yourself to something that controls your behavior. Right. The same is true about the Holy Spirit. And it's a choice in both cases. But how powerful is that when you think about that taking this drink can change my behavior mm -hmm. because I'm allowing myself, now I'm not in control of my own behavior. Who's Do you realize that? Who's consuming who? Yeah. Right, that's exactly right. But people don't look at it that way. I tell people all the time, don't let other people dictate your emotions. The same is true with alcohol. It'll control you if you allow it. You can not get just alcohol. Extremely, that's true. Right. You can get extremely high on the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I know. In a good way. You just get the dark in a good way. Says <laughs> relax, you just start saying praise Jesus. I just had a faith. Just do that for a while. Get your little trance going. All of a sudden, you're going to find you are drunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are hot. You are not. You're not. The Holy you, Spirit. You're not doing it. You're doing all kinds. And it's. I always call it the ghost of the ghost. Uh, <laughs> and the ghost and ghost. I mean, and if you want to feel like, I'm sure everybody has in their own different way. It's like. Well, it's funny you say that because it says, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your mind. Yep. That's how it's done. And give thanks for everything to God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is where it gets controversial. Are we ready? And further, submit to one another out of the reverence of Christ. Now listen, he just talked about Submitting yourself to the power of the Holy Spirit. You just talked about submitting yourself to alcohol. He's talking about submitting yourselves to one another. Be vulnerable with one another. That's what that means. Now listen to this. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body and the church. And the church submits to Christ so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. 
Now, how do people misuse those verses? They forget the second. We're going to get there. You're absolutely right. What else, though? What did they that, say that about could, That verses? could make a man feel like he's superior to his wife. No. Yep. And we're not superior. Why did God appoint man to be the head of the household? Instead of the created man first. Okay. Yep. And the woman was first deceived. Okay. Yep. What else? Those are right. What else? Well, men are different than women. They're stronger in different ways than women. Than okay. Women. Physically, men are stronger. I don't care what people think. I know some women are stronger than some men. Okay. It's all there is to <laughs> No, it is. I know there are strong women, but, but that's physically not men are stronger. So yeah. here's the thing. Men are supposed to be protectors. Yep. Right? Okay. We're built the way we're built. So that provide. we can protect, so that we can defend, so that we can be warriors. Yes. And, and that's provide. and and when it talks about the woman, and it talks about treat the woman as the weaker vessel, it's not saying she's weak minded. It's not saying she's lesser than. It's saying that we're supposed to guard her with our life. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? And you're the absolutely church. right. They forget the second verse. For husbands, this means love your wives as Christ loved the church. He died for the church. And husbands should be ready to die for their wives to defend her. Okay, so who's more powerful or who's more important than who? It doesn't matter. You're equal. But here's what men do. Oh, submit to me, woman. Yeah. Right? Oh, you're supposed to be quiet in the church. That's what the Bible says. Well, you know what, pal? You don't understand what the Bible says. Yeah, that garbage. It's all garbage. Because it's not true. It's all garbage. Um, I just want to say that I've talked to my husband about this before, that when my dad died when I was young, it my mom was subject to whoever came to try to do something to our family or whatever, and she didn't have my dad. Right. And that was devastating. If you don't have that man in your house to protect their the wife and and the kids, they're they're left vulnerable. That's right. And I don't care what I don't care what woman thinks they're so bad that they don't have to have a man. They're wrong. Yeah. Well, well. The God puts it in order. Yeah. Your husband is to take care of your family and watch over. And not only that, he's accountable for. Yes. Yeah. And 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 and. And I think about when I was young like that, that people would do stuff. I mean, my mom was always, every time I turned around, it was like people would do things to us because my dad was dead. And she didn't have her husband. And so, I mean, that always touches me when I read that. You know, the reason I, 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 I talk to people about this a lot, you know, because that's what, you know, like, I talk to one of those probably yeah. that Given birth. Yep. Childbirth. Childbirth. And you see these women dropping kids after kids after kids and going back and getting another one. Never learn. And they don't have anything. We they don't, don't have learn. Things, all this other stuff. You know, like I'm looking at this over. Wait a minute. You know, because they, you know, they're strong. Women are strong in their own way. They might not be able to pick up a bunch of stuff, but they're strong. They can't guard a house. They can't do that. A lot of them try to. But if you notice, we were built to compliment one another. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Men are stronger women are emotionally strong. Yeah. Men may be able to pick something up, but women could, women could build something, can weave something together. You know, mm -hmm. and, and we have to recognize that they complement one another, and and one's not more important than the other. And no. so when when I read these verses, I always want to be clear about what's intended because people manipulate these things, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm gonna teach it the way it's written. You know, something that's funny, we used to say that, and stop to reference, what did you ever say? Most people don't say dad and mom. They say mom and dad. 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 Mom and d
Mom's the you know, head of the household. Of people don't do that. <laughs> yep. That's insane. That's not disrespected there. It's, no. It just comes out that way. But, and, and I want to get to one thing Mom. as we're talking yep. about this. There's a lot of women out there that want to be the head. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and by the doing head. that, they're removing themselves from God's protection. Yep. Okay. They're, they want to be, but then, but then they also want, there's a lot of people that want men to act like women. Hmm. Okay. Where you need to be emotional and you need to be, um, you know, soft spoken and you need, no. no. There's a book called um, Wild at Heart. Yes. Read it. And uh, John Eldridge. Yeah. Great and, and men were created be a certain way. Yes. You can't have a wussy man that is subservient in church that's going to defend your house. You don't get both. Correct. You don't get to wake up one day and say, look, I don't want you to be this way. I want you to turn off your your who you are as a man. I want you to be Manhood. subservient. <laughs> but then when we're attacked, you need to step up. It doesn't work that way. No. But guys, this is what our our, our society is struggling with. You know, I love our church because there's a lot of men in our church. Most churches don't have a lot of men. Right. Yeah, it's exactly Because right. of this reason. Yep. Because the church looks down on manhood. The church looks down on masculinity. And there's nothing wrong with masculinity as long as it's kept in check mm-hmm. by femininity. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because the reality is if you have one without the other, regardless, it's harmful. You can't have too much spitting, cursing, and fighting, but then you can't have everybody kissing, hugging, and loving either. You know, because you got too much of one or the other. They, they complement each other, okay? And, and how it's supposed to work is here's God, this is the way God set it up. Here's the man, here's the woman, here's the children. But, like it has been in my situation, the children and the women decide they're gonna go over here and do this, well now, you're, you're no longer under the protection yep. of the husband. That's all there is to it. Okay? And if a man, by the way, goes out and does his own thing and doesn't protect his family, God's still going to protect that family. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to yep. tell you right now. He's on his own. Yeah. Okay? So I just wanted to, to kind of walk through that because there's so much garbage that's taught from these verses that we need to be aware of. Okay? In that book, they talk about how Jesus, at times, was the warrior when he had to be right. against the Pharisees. Like he wasn't going to stand down to them, uh, turning the tables, but uh, okay. in the temple. But then also, he was so kind and loving at at that moment. He knew exactly when to be a warrior and when to be the loving Jesus. And you can be both, but the point right, is, right, you have to know when to be. Jesus. You don't, you don't get to demasculate. Is that right. a word? Right. Demasculate men. And then expect that they're still going to be there to protect you. And you don't get to be in charge as a woman and then expect everybody to love you as a mother. It doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. you know. And so we have to recognize our roles. And that's hard to do in today's society because everybody says yep. you can be anything you want. That's yep. not who God created you to be. Make the kids 14, they can take away four girls. Right. <laughs> That's not who God created you to no. be. And, and, and if you want to go that route, good luck. Because you're going to be a confused person. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get hurt. Okay? Just a um, I always um, heard people say that um, whenever, like, I don't know if, if someone's husband left or whatever. So that wife would be, would go to her pastor mm-hmm. To ask for direction because that's who she's under some authority, and that's you're under the authority of your church. Yes, spiritual authority. Yeah, just like the man's supposed to be under the authority. Right. So there's nothing wrong with that. You no. can also do that the man in your your own household or, or your family. Right. But but he, she's not asking for permission. She's asking no. for help. Help. And there's a difference, you know, <laughs> because. You know, people are like, oh, she's got to. No, she doesn't have to. No, it's but, like but guidance. But you are under the spiritual authority like of your church. Like guidance. Absolutely. Yep. And God's going to bless that. Yep. Well, Nothing wrong with that. That's a perfect example. Like if, if somebody, somebody's husband leaves, I mean, it, that's, that makes them a widow in a degree. So, mm. you know, and, and 
therefore you're that rules what you're supposed to do and take care of take care of the women and children the yep. yep. exactly part of the church you know yep. somebody's got to look you know look after they don't have their husband anymore you know somebody's got to look after them. and i'm sure that works in reverse so i just i just wanted to point that out the roles and responsibilities because god sets this up not me mm -hmm. you know and, right. and when people well i don't agree well you don't have to but good luck with that yep <laughs> that's know, right you know tell me how that works out for you it's in the scripture that's so right. that's your problem and time after time after time it's proven <laughs> over and over right? and over yeah. <laughs> that this works if we follow right you know um for husbands this means love your wife wives as christ loved the church he gave his life for her to live her holy being washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blood. Basically a virgin. Right? Mm -hmm. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Now, he's saying this in the context of if, if we do this the right way, she's going to be this way. Right? If we set up the, the uh, order of the household, she's going to be holy without fault. It protects her from all the garbage. Something we've got to remember, too. You know, we're not going to get into this specifically, but it talks about how women are supposed to be quiet in church, right? Do you know what they're talking about in that verse? I figure I'll bring it up anyway. It said, go to your husband, right? Ask him. It's not about who's in charge and who's got the wisdom. It's about, at the time... Everybody was speaking out in church. Right, disruption. There was disrupting the services. It wasn't about subservient behavior. Go to your husband, let him ask. You know, it's order. Otherwise, yeah. you got chaos, right? Yep. That's the idea. So I just want to also talk about that. Um, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives if they love their own bodies. We take care of our bodies, right? Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't point. I didn't point no, no finger. She didn't point, point a finger. <laughs> no one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of His body. Husbands are supposed to take care of their wives, like we take take care of our bodies. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother, and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Here's the thing: we're not supposed to live at home forever. We're not supposed to depend on our parents. We're not supposed to have our parents pay, pay our bills. Right. It's very clear. A man leaves his father and mother, is joined to his wife. And they're united. They become one. Okay. Now you work it out together. Right? Unless they leave. Did I mention that? This is a great <laughs> mystery. But it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. It's a picture of the church. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. That's it. Question? I really wasn't looking forward to teaching that, to be honest with you. You did a good job. Uh, I, yeah. I wasn't looking forward to it. <laughs> Why did I think that same thing? <laughs> she had the same thing. What? Come on, tell me what it means. Because because women think alike and men think alike. So right. There you go. She's over here. R E S T U C T. Anybody so, got any comments? Anything you want to share? What does the respect mean to you? What is respect? Yes. Understanding that you're equal. Understanding your place in the marriage, understanding your role, Stay understanding, uh, understanding Stay what, Stay what, what you say your lane. Yes, lane. I <laughs> like that one the best. <laughs> Stay in your own what, lane. What God's called you to be and what God's called you to it be. It makes me yeah. stay in my own lane all the time. <laughs> Find your lane and stay in your lane. You know, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what my shrimp told me today. That, you know, just know when you're what lane, lane you're supposed to be in and stay in. It. Don't be changing lanes. Yeah. But respect their opinion. You don't have to agree with it. I mean, somewhere yeah. along the lines in our country, we think that if we don't agree, then we have to hate each other. Right. It's so right. Yeah. garbage. No, that's garbage. You know, all of a sudden, Republicans and Democrats can't eat in the same diner. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. You know, if, 
Well, I thought that when you turned 18, you, you started to get rid of that garbage. But kindergarten. We, we can't. It's kindergarten stuff. It's people being people. Yeah. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting worse, and it's only because hmm. the kid got out of church and, and coming out of schools in 1962. You know, I heard that in a song. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, about that. Don't, isn't there a song? <laughs> It's, it's, it's a godless world, and it's, it, it really is, but it's not. It's not a godless world. God is there. You know, you just got to recognize it. You know, that's, keep God in the equation, in my opinion. If you keep God in the equation and don't waver off, you got a shot. If you don't, you ain't got a shot. You really don't. I, I realized that. It took, it took an axe to drop a head. Jim's gonna live a long time because he's got to get sanctified. Ain't going anywhere for a while. <laughs> get the Snickers out. I, I told somebody that once. I said I'm gonna live a long time. I'm like, how, how do you know that? I said because I got to get sanctified. Me too. I'm work in progress. You guys, uh, I'm speaking next Tuesday. If you want to come to the, to the 15 minutes of fame at the Eclectic. Oh, cool. Do you guys want to come? to church? Yeah. What day? Sunday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. What time? Um, they start at 6.30, but you don't have to be there at 6.30. Send, send, send us the info, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm telling my story. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Anybody need an old dog? Are we still recording on? Yes. Oh, we might want to shut that off. You're going to say a prayer? Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for time together tonight. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to continue to be light to this world. Amen. 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 Yeah. So, I went over to the ladies' house.